Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. Epistry Typing Chronicles. This is one of the most unique games that I've played in a very long time. And thankfully, it's also available on Linux. So as the title could probably tell you, this is actually a typing game. And so the whole premise of this game is not only a typing game, but it mixes an adventure game, an RPG game, a fantasy game, and also strategy as well. So those sound like things that wouldn't go too well, but this game does it masterfully. And as you can see right here, it is absolutely beautiful. It uses this origami style element, the R3D elements, and it's just beautiful artwork. And the game is very simple in nature. All you do is whenever you come up to an enemy like this, you see words, you type it in. So you would type in the large words first, and then the other words afterwards. And so that's how you would actually destroy these enemies. And the thing is, you know, you actually have a strategy element because every time you press the space bar, you stop, you can't move, okay? And so you have to either type really fast or press the space bar again so then you can actually move and then try again. And as you get further and further, you know, you actually get all these points which you can also use to upgrade. And so I'll show you what I mean. So let me press the space bar. Let me see if I can open this chest. And this can get super addictive uh, because as you play this more and more and your typing skills get better and better, it just makes you want to encounter more enemies or items so that you can practice your typing skills. And I could easily see this as something that would be amazing for classrooms where children and adults alike could really improve their typing skills because as you get further along there's more enemies uh, there's more tougher challenges your typing skills better uh, increase or otherwise you're probably going to get destroyed and there's also these really cool quotes and lines in here um, that will probably mean something later on in different parts of the game because I myself I did not start this game from the beginning uh, this is actually a game that my brother's been playing and so I did not get to experience this whole story so in a lot of ways I am really new to this world that is being built here and as you can see here you could spend so much time just exploring and if you press escape you actually see a map and this is huge and not only can you look at the map you could also go to upgrades as well so here's where the RPG elements come in so you could actually increase your skill set or your powers just by typing it in okay and obviously you're gonna have to gain points to increase this and then once you go back into the game uh, there's so many different types of enemies like this one's a lot faster so you have to type in way quicker and you're also able to use different types of powers this is a fire power but you also hit like ice power and um, also there's wind power and many other types of powers I think there's like an electricity power as well and you gain this as you get further in the game or as you purchase more power okay and some enemies require you to use different types of powers ooh look at that so let me see if I could take them out and this is such a cool mechanic that they have on here because when I think about it the mechanic of just typing is simple but the way the designers have made this it gets really detailed okay and you actually have to think about where you want to type when you want to type and also if it makes sense for you to try to battle some of these uh, enemies and I love this and so let me see if I could go to a different part of the stage because this overworld is beautiful but there's also other worlds within this one stage and there really aren't too many typing games like this okay uh, that are this fun I remember the house of the dead typing edition so here's a different part so now we're gonna go within the depths they call it the burning hollow and look at how different this stage looks or it's actually stage within the stage but there's had to be so much attention to care to this man and then what's really cool is at least you think at first it's easy but then when there's a whole bunch of enemies surrounding you it just gets extremely challenging Wow and I could easily see this game becoming like a VR game that would be pretty cool look at that beast that's a huge beast so let's take it out 
Oh man, see that the enemy, this enemy has a lot more words you have to type in. So definitely not an easy enemy to destroy. Now, as far as I know, there is no jump functionality here. So your character is basically moving around and typing. And that's it. Like I said, very simple play mechanics. However, it could get very complex because of the way things are designed within the game and, and also the type of enemies that you encounter. I'm really digging the diversity of where I'm at because there's some stages that are played. It's so different, okay? And obviously the enemies are different as well. And as you get further in the game, you could also use like warp, you know, different warps. So then you could go through the game a little quicker. And I like how they vary the type of typing that you have to do. It's like, it's not the same style of typing. Well, this one's a long one. E N E N. Oh, that took forever. So what did I get here? Cool. All right. Two out of three fragments collected. Sweet. And I think that plus 30, whenever you get something, that's like maybe your experience points. See 23,130 up to 25,000. And I definitely love the fantasy element of this. This reminds me a lot of old school fantasy movies like The Dark Crystal and stuff. Ooh, spider. Boy, that spider was had a lot of words to it. Now this one's got more words. Acid. Bam. But not enough to destroy me. And you could also set the difficulty to where it randomly changes. So it adjusts your playstyle. What is that? Oh, cool. Forgotten Forest. Whoa. Oh, check that out. That looks so cool. And I definitely think the whole origami design style, it just gives it a look and feel that's really hard to describe. Oh, what is that? Okay, pedal? Okay, I'm not sure what these numbers mean. Okay, so one, two, three. Boom. Awesome. One, two. Okay, I gotta do that in order. One, two, three. Wow, another different design choice. This is really cool. The forest opened to her with Oh, that is so awesome. And I like how the developers and the designers added that element because it really changes up the gameplay right there. It's simply not just typing once again. Oh, now this character, this this enemy. Let's take them out. Oh, sweet. Okay, so that is it for a history typing chronicles. This is an absolutely amazing game. Uh, so different in so many ways, and I can't say enough about how awesome this game is and how I wish there were more games like this you know obviously these are not games that are come very often but it really makes me wish that more and triple a games were more like this you know where it has this really unique feel uh, but it also feels like it's a game made by indie developers which I'm pretty sure it's a small team as well but these are the type of games that I would would want to play more and more of. It's just a beautiful game. Just check that out. It's beautiful. It's imaginative. It's addicting. And at the same time, you actually develop some better skills, in this case, typing. And so if you had any thoughts on this game, Epistry, the Typing Chronicles, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And if there were any other type of games that are similar to this, I'd like to know that as well. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to subscribe. And if you wanted to support my channel further, you could do that at Patreon. 
dot com forward slash geek outdoors. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com and I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.